Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin with our Nerva Refueler, which is a quite unique looking rocket. And the rocket is named the Rhombus R, after a famous design by, I believe, Phil Bono. And uh, the Rhombus is just a unique little uh, rocket. Uh, you'll have to look it up for details, I'm not going to go into it right now. But uh, we have to rendezvous with the Nerva. I think that's the, that's the one, hopefully. It'll be a real pain if we rendezvous with the wrong thing. But it looks right because it's in line with our station and everything, and that would be the case, and also the moon, of course. So, yeah, we're trying to refuel the Nerva, which has a fairly low periapsis and very high apoapsis. And we need to time warp so that we're in the right inclination. But the idea of this is that... Um, well, uh, this is uh, the core is recoverable. The reason it has the interesting shape is because there's a heat shield right here. And we're going to recover. The core has some J2s and some LR87s, uh, the vacuum version of the LR87. I think this might be the first time I'm actually using it. Um, I'm using it in desperation because what we really needed was the RS25s, which we actually had, but I didn't realize we had when I built this. So, it's all very complicated. The sound that you might have been hearing uh, was the sound of the nuclear engine on the refueler. Of course, we're using a nuclear engine on a refueler, and of course, the refueler is going to be recoverable as well. It's got a heat shield on the bottom, and the engine's actually on top here. So, it's going to have to flip around in order to use the engine. Oh, we have something else to do. Darn it. Ah, uh, we have to pay attention to Uranus Ambassador entering Jupiter SOI. You know what? I think we can launch first and then pay attention to that. Entering Jupiter SOI isn't like the biggest thing. It's still got like 60 days until it reaches Jupiter. So we'll hold off on that alarm. Now I'm going to control this manually because it's a bit of a interesting rocket after all. SAS on and ignition. launch. So these are just fuel pods and then these are little boosters with NK33s on them because we didn't have enough thrust to weight ratio. On the original design there were only fuel pods on the outside and with the RS25s I think we could get away with just having fuel pods. Once we get to a high enough altitude, we'll light the J2s. It does have a lot of drag to it. I think 10 kilometers would be good enough for the J2s. Maybe a little bit higher. Okay, here we go with the J2s. Okay, off. Boosters are away. And those aren't so recoverable. So now it's J2s and the LR87 Hydrolox editions. Now we have to pay attention to these tanks so that we know when to get rid of them. Right now there's just oxygen in them. And that's because there's a surplus of hydrogen in the main tank in the center. Okay, off they go. And you can see if we play our cards right, we can get to orbit on this stage. The closer to orbit, the better, because this has to then deorbit itself. Now, these are our hydrogen gas thrusters. Remember, we had configured such things. So that uh, as long as we leave some hydrogen in here, it's going to be able to orient itself and use these parachutes to save itself with the heat shield. I don't know if I have the LR87s shut down, if that's a good idea or not. I don't think so. They have a slightly lower specific impulse. I don't know if I action group that or not. I forget. Let me see. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. We did action group shutting down the LR87s. So, I guess that's what I planned. This is the problem with having Kerbal Construction Time. When I actually designed this was a long time ago now. So I don't remember all my plans. 
We'll start the radio radiators off now. Activate. Make sure you have enough to cover your tanks. They only work on the tank they're attached to. So, I'm I'm guessing you haven't seen a rocket quite like this before. So, I'm I'm proud of that. Uh, we we've done something new finally. And once we get the version with the RS-25s, the outside tanks will just be outside tanks. There won't be any engines on and then it'll be mostly recoverable. We are just barely in space right now. Okay, that's pretty steep on the periapsis, but anyway, let's... we'll follow it down. We'll follow it down. RCS on, and let's, uh... think... I don't think I have a controller backwards, though. Good thing we still left ourselves some time to apoapsis. 50 minutes of fuel. Total of 10,000 meters per second. Um, the thing is, of course, we're trying to deliver the fuel, not use it all up. So we'll see how much we can actually deliver. But of course, the Nerva is currently in a high orbit. So not the most convenient thing. But you'll notice this is perfectly pod-shaped right now. Which is good. And it's a lunar rated heat shield, so even if we come in from a high orbit, it should be alright, right? Okay, that's orbit, barely. Let's switch to the other vessel, if we can. <laughs> so many pieces. Okay, so now we're actually going in this way around, prograde. So surface plus velocity. And we do have electric charge. And we barely have any liquid hydrogen. So that's not great. But hopefully it'll be able to orient itself all right. We'll see. As long as it starts going in the right way, it should stay going in the right way. But if it doesn't start the right way around, it'll probably flip engine side first. I've only put about a third of the ablator, 30%, I think it is. Well, let's see if we have enough liquid hydrogen to hold it on the way down. We only have 1,400 units that we've got here. I'd rather dump some electric charge and have more hydrogen, honestly. I guess this is sort of analogous to bringing back the second stage of the Falcon 9, except, of course, this was lit on the ground with those four engines. And also, this is way more expensive considering the engines being used here. So definitely more valuable to bring back. Also stouter. I mean, the second stage of Falcon 9 is longer. So it'd have a harder time uh, with the heat shield protecting it than this does. This is shaped a little bit better for that purpose. Okay, as expected, it does take a while, but we are now under 100 kilometers, and we're good on the hydrogen fuel. It's hardly using any right now, though the worst part for consumption of RCS is like around 70 kilometers and uh, down to 55. So, but, but so far, so good. No problems. Obviously, the main concern right now is just flipping around. Well, various parts are exploding behind us. But uh, yeah, uh, if it flips around, that's bad. As long as it stays like this, it's good. But it's consuming a little bit more fuel now. Uh, wait, no. We'll see. As far as our authorities, our role, yaw and pitch authorities, it's not maxing anything out in a dangerous way. Okay, we are below 70 kilometers now, still holding steady. Still with 1,300 units of liquid hydrogen, and that's great because we started off with 1,400, so we've hardly used any. We are starting to get flame effects, and I'm looking at the ablator. Of course, I set it to 30%, but I have no idea how much it uses. If we can lighten that up, of course, that's a big benefit. 4 G's. Of course, G's aren't quite as important in this case. So, no big worries. Uh, the controller is underneath the heat shield, by the way. Probably the safest place for it. Okay, peak G forces were 7.54. And we still have 1300 units of liquid hydrogen, so it's like 
we, we used maybe 100, 200 tops, which is pretty excellent when you think about it. And now it's all up to the parachutes. We only used a tiny bit of ablator. So we should dump more of that. But better safe than sorry on our first test. I I do wonder whether dumping the ablator might cause a problem as far as the mass is concerned. Right now it seems pretty well balanced though. I mean, you know, the mass of the heat shield might need to be a certain amount to make sure it doesn't flip around and go tail first with all the mass with the engines, right? So I don't know how, how much we can dump the ablator before it starts wanting to flip around. It's not just a matter of how much we use, it's a matter of how much mass the, the heat shield actually has. There's probably a point where I'll try and flip. Let's check our coordinates. Well, zero, zero, basically. So, yeah. Uh, right, right on the equator and right on the, the mer prime meridian. It's a lot of parachutes, actually. I think I made everything a triple shoot. But we're only down to 5.7, so it's probably best that I did. It was water, as a matter of fact. Huh. Okay. Well, off the coast of Africa, then. And let's stop the bouncing, please. Recover. 22 minutes and 52 seconds into flight. Actually, I, I don't know if it's from the start of the launch or after the decoupling. I guess from the start of the launch. Before I get into the rendezvous with the Nerva stage, we should take care of that Uranus ambassador and make sure it's all right. Okay, so we got 27,000 funds back. 58.3% of the total value. And we got some science. Recovery of vessel after a suborbital flight. I would have thought we would have done that by now, but okay. Um, Alright, yeah. So we accomplished a thing. Let's go to the Uranus Ambassador now. Okay, so here it is. It's got a node in one year, so that can't be in Jupiter SOI. Um, I guess we were just wanting to take a look at it to make sure it was alright. And then it has a maneuver out here after it passes through Jupiter. And it seems to pass through Jupiter just fine. And Saturn periapsis there. And that Saturn periapsis doesn't look like it's getting us to Uranus, does it? I feel like we could do something a little bit better with that. Maybe that's what we were taking a look at here to fix. So let's see. Well, there's a Uranus encounter if we want it cost a little bit more than the 12 meters per second we originally had and if we take a look our original approach around Saturn was fairly loose this one is tighter so I consider that better a better view of the rings and everything so maybe we'll just keep it like this well except let's optimize our Uranus approach this all happens after we pass by Jupiter, so we don't have to worry about changing that at all. In fact, it's still too touchy to really refine properly. Maybe with a little bit of... no, even the radial is very touchy. So, yep, yeah, that's as close as we're going to get, and we're probably going to have to do another correction between Saturn and Uranus to really get it there. But, yeah, let's just schedule this particular maneuver. Uh, could we do some extra science here in... The Jupiter system? Maybe, but we're still pretty high over Jupiter right now. So, I don't think that's going to be a big deal. We'll have other stuff coming over to Jupiter soon enough, and uh, we have that window in 208 days if I want to send something else. So, we'll see. For now, I'll just schedule that node in one year and 47 days, and we'll move on to what we were supposed to be doing, which is refueling to Nerva. All right. Oh, there are two... Oh, right, because that maneuver had already been scheduled before. That makes sense. Okay, so... Let's just make sure we're not crashing into Saturn, and yes, everything is all right. Okay, well, let's think about this logically as far as rendezvousing with the Nerva Tug there. Um, we're going to take 
I've, I've plotted a little location at periapsis and it looks like we'll reach periapsis in about 25 minutes 26 minutes and the nervatug is going to reach this periapsis here it seems like it's right here in uh, 5 hours and 28 minutes assuming that's all right that means that when we get there the nervatug is gonna take 5 hours and 2 minutes to get there which means what we would like to do is get into an orbit of two and a half uh well two hours and 31 minutes because two hours and 31 minutes will be half of five hours and two minutes and so it'll take us two orbits to catch up with it or however you want to look at it and i probably should have started this out a little bit earlier okay all right that's good enough actually i didn't mean to go that far but we'll take it and we'll readjust after the next go around, which will include flattening this out. And also boosting our own periapsis up to the periapsis of the target. Okay, well, I've plotted a maneuver node, but I really would like to point in the opposite direction of the maneuver node, so. <laughs> Let's see, where is that maneuver node? Well, it's over there. It's not really showing me what's going to happen, actually, which is disconcerting. We're here. I sort of will have to wonder, why isn't it showing me any... Oh, well, there's a thing. That's not where I wanted the encounter, though. But, okay. But yeah, that was not the location I was trying to rendezvous with it at. So, math was wrong. We still have a lot of burning to do because our relative velocity to target is significant, though not quite as much as that, but still. We've got some work to do here as we approach. Okay, well, two minutes. I think I'm gonna take more than two minutes to burn off that kind of velocity. So target positive relative velocity because our engine is backwards. Now obviously we do want this back because we've got two of these nuclear engines, solid core nuclear engines, running at 37 to 40 kilonewtons. They're expensive and we want them back too, so we have to make sure to bring this back home. We're obviously not going to uh, give the Nerva the amount of fuel that I would like. It won't be fully refueled but it'll be refueled enough to bring itself back down to low Earth orbit so that we can refuel it properly. And hopefully we won't strand it in this orbit ever again. Hopefully we will make sure that it goes to low Earth orbit each time so it's easier to refuel with this in particular. Well, there it is, flying past us. It's better that it's ahead of us. We're in the lower orbit. So maybe on the next go around we can catch up to it. Okay, let's actually stop this here and wait until periapsis, I think. We're getting a little bit lopsided overall, and I'd rather encounter it down here. Now, of course, our nervous stage uses hypergolics for its RCS, and we really need to change that. It'd be better not to use hypergolics on it, and instead change it to the hydrogen gas thrusters as well. That can be done one of two ways, have a Kerbal EVA and take the old RCS ports off and slap the new ones on, assuming that the RCS ports retain their configuration when they're in a KIS box. Or um, we could just send up a new Nerva and decommission the current one. Well, I'm hoping the dis- ah, there we go. Closest approach distance goes down, that's important. Our RCS thrusters, of course, are nowhere near as efficient as the main engines. They're only a quarter of the ISP, so... Okay, well, let's see if the Nerva can turn towards us. Still got some RCS fuel. We'll need to replenish that once it's in low orbit. You can see the relative size of this compared to the Nerva stage. And, obviously... I mean, the front of it is exactly identical. That's pretty obvious. This, I don't think, is as much fuel as is contained there. So, we're not doing a full refuel here right now. We might have to size up the rhombus. And maybe that's possible with the RS-25s to scale it up a little bit to make sure that we can fully refuel the nervous stage. 
But the, like I said, the nervous stage might get a redesign because of the thrusters. The downside to Nerva right now is, of course, it has limited ignitions. These engines don't. Well, the nice things about them. It'd be quite impossible to use, uh, to do all this if these engines only had 60 ignitions. We have, well, I mean, we're bringing them back down anyway, so I guess it wouldn't be too bad, but they'd be rather annoying. Okay, so we will refuel. Actually, uh, because we don't have the Arizina N204 in this portion here, we're carrying more liquid hydrogen. We still need a little bit of liquid hydrogen here to make sure it can deorbit, though. And I'll keep that little bit in the bottom bit. Or, or here, I don't know. <laughs> well, apparently that might be the more convenient option. Center of mass is totally moving over here. Hmm. I'll keep this little bit here. Let's, let's see if that's enough for the Nerva to bring itself to a low orbit now. I don't think 15,000 is what this needs, but I want to see. I want to make sure. We definitely do not want to strand that. We want to bring it back down. That's part of the whole thing here. Looks like 807 meters per second is what it has right now. We probably, because our periapsis is at 220, we probably only need 200 tops to re-enter. But this is good. Uh, let's check how much, well Nerva has 4,800. Definitely enough to bring its orbit down. So everything is good. Everything is peachy. Whoops. Um, but now we have to do both things. We have to bring its orbit back down. We also have to make sure this re-enters. Okay, I'm going to deorbit using just the RCS thrusters, even though that's not as efficient. I gotta set it to 50 kilometers. That should be all right, even if we skip out. I don't mind so much. With the nuclear engines providing electric charge, we're not gonna run out of that. A blazer we might run out of. We're at 30% right now. I don't know if that's good enough. We will see. Okay, so yeah, uh, let's follow this and we'll wait until this is done before we turn to Nerva. Now it's got its parachutes. Let me arm them. And it's a 12 ton vessel, so not as heavy as the, the stage we previously recovered, of course, with the six engines. So hopefully it'll be even better off. And it's better shaped too. Okay, let's just SAS it until we get into the atmosphere. Alright. Okay, here we go again. Can we recover this? If we can, it's, it's a pretty darn recoverable system. Pretty darn recoverable. Not 100%, but pretty darn good. Okay, we have re-entry effects, and we're definitely going to be coming back down and not going up into space again. High g-forces, but nobody's on board. And we still didn't use anywhere near as much ablator as we were packing. So very good. In fact, this should probably be able to come back down from, from lunar orbit even. Yep, good times. Everything is working out, amazingly enough. This is rare for me. It's a rare experience. Okay, parachute deployment. Things seem to be going well. How far away from the KSC are we? We're, uh, South Pacific, off the coast of South America here. Okay, we have full parachute deployment, and... That brings us to 3.8 meters per second, so it looks like all is well. Okay, splash down and recover. Okay, the game crashed when I was trying to recover, which is fine. That was the first crash so far. And so I have to recover from here. And so here we have the Nerva Refueler, 41,000 funds recovered, and both solid core nuclear engines. Now it might occur to you to ask why we bother using the Nerva when we could just use these and these don't have the ignition limit while the Nerva does, and that's mainly because Nerva has 300 kilonewtons of thrust, whereas these have 40 kilonewtons apiece. So we'd have to have eight of these engines in order to equal one Nerva, 
And that's actually pretty darn expensive when you get right down to it. So yeah, that's basically why we still want to use Denerva for a while, unless until we get a newer nuclear engine that doesn't have the ignition limit. But uh, so far so good, we recover these funds. Excellent. And really, uh, well, what we really need to do is bring Nerva back down again. And after that, uh, we probably should top it up with fuel. But let's see. Let's. I don't know if I have time for that right now. Probably we'll do that closer to when we have the Mars or Jupiter uh, transfer windows so we can use Nerva to help us out with that. Also, we might want to improve our systems a bit. But anyway, let's bring it down to a low Earth orbit. So the fuel that the refueler was able to provide was less than half the capacity of Nerva, but um, a lot of Delta V still. But basically we need to send two such missions up or just not be in high orbit. I think we would have gotten more units of liquid hydrogen up like that. But still, it won't be able to top it off on one flight. Our current inclination is a little bit irritating, but not that bad. Not bad enough to warrant fixing. We could send up the fuel to refuel this with the mission that this will send. We don't have to have a separate refueler mission necessarily. Okay, let's cut it there. 381 by 221 should be fine. And yeah, use the bundle of fuel for that. So basically we need to remember to carry up 480,000 liters of liquid hydrogen is what that says. And some air xenon into a four, of course. Yeah, well, we'll see how to build a mission that will do that as well as bring up the payload at the same time should be interesting yeah so I'll look into that and how best to use Nerva but we have it back down again so we've got some possibilities I think I'll wrap it up here we introduced a new system mostly reusable and I think that rhombus system is quite interesting and uh, we've got Nerva back in place and after this uh, well we, we're mainly constructing stuff until the transfer windows, Mars and Jupiter here. We've got some maneuver nodes to handle, but uh, as far as our TAC life support situation, we may have to resupply moon port 1, otherwise our supply situation is fine. Uh, well, uh, maybe some food to space port 2 would be a good idea, but mainly moon port 1 has 5 crew there. We might want to resupply that and uh, send some food up here. But we've already constructed the vessels for that. If we take a look at our build list, uh, we've got two moonport resupplies here, and another moonport resupply here, and two spaceport resupplies here. So that's all built. As far as other stuff that's coming up, I've got an extra Lunapod G if we need to send that over. I've got an experimental quad lander that's going to be constructed in four days. That's to bring four Kerbals to the surface of the moon, so it's much bigger. It actually has a Gemini capsule plus a Mark I lander can advanced, I think it is. And that has two more. And it's an interesting shape. But once again, we have the problem where we're going to have to send a Kerbal with it, which is annoying. And finally, uh, we're starting to construct a new Mars Base 1 to send over to Mars on that transfer window. And that's going to be launching on a Fiji 34, so three F1 engines and four J2 engines. Actually, there's uh, one more J2 uh, as an upper stage. It's just four in, uh, on the second stage. So I probably should have called it Fiji 35, maybe Fiji 34-1. Not sure. Anyway. So that's all coming up and there's more besides. I suspect that somewhere in the middle of all this before we get to the Mars and Jupiter window we should do some moon things. And maybe maybe it's time for another little lunar lander of some kind. Yeah. Or maybe a new lunar base. I don't know. There's a lot of things I'm thinking about. So I'll get to that in the next episode. For now we had a brand new system 
and I think it's going to serve us well. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like, and I'll see you next time.